Hello world, this is Lisa Fredrickson, your professor from Johnson County Community College. And in this short screencast, we're going to talk about how your JavaScript is triggered. In our last screencast, we looked at plants.htm and we launched it and saw that the JavaScript that we're interested in is not running until we click these list items. And typically that's when you want your JavaScript to run when the user interacts with the web page. That's why when we looked at the four locations for our JavaScript in our web page, we saw a link to an external file right before the closing body tag. So it's common to put the bulk of your JavaScript in an external file right before the closing body tag for this reason. Typically you want the page to load before the user needs to interact with it. So why load your JavaScript before the rest of the page has finished loading? We also want to put our JavaScript in this external file for the same reasons the bulk of our styles are in an external file. So we can use that file and point to multiple pages and reuse our code. Now there are some exceptions to that rule, however. For example, we also saw the script tag that points to the modernizer file in the head section. That file helps older browsers read this new HTML5 code. So the header, the nav, aside, all these HTML5 tags that you see in this page, this common script file, modernizer.js, takes care of that problem for the older browsers. So because we need that code before we hit these tags, this script's most appropriate location is in the head section. Sometimes because we think of the head section as information about the page and the body as content on the page, we're tempted to put all of our scripts, all of our JavaScripts in the head section. But really, your page is going to load faster. We'll have plenty of time to load the JavaScript files that are before that closing body tag before the user will probably need to interact with your web page and use that code. So except for Modernizer, you're probably going to want to put the bulk of your code in an external file that's connected to the web page right before the closing body tag. Now we had two other examples of code in this page, and I'm going to skip the code that's connected with this on click event for now because we'll handle that in another screencast. I just want to talk about this little script that's in the body of the web page. In chapter one, the author has us put this in just to prove that you can put scripts anywhere on your HTML page. This particular script is a little bit silly though, because all it has is one statement. It's got some comments. It's got a one line comment here at the end. I'm going to put that on its own line for readability, but it really only has this one JavaScript line. So we could take this HTML that is being written by this JavaScript line and put it in our web page as HTML. So that's all the script is doing is writing this P tag and then some text and then it's writing this A tag and the attribute value for this and some text. It's closing the A tag, more text and closing the P tag. That's all that's going on with this document write statement. So why would we use JavaScript to do that when we can simply write the HTML? Well, we wouldn't. So the only point in that was to prove that you can put JavaScript anywhere on your page that you want, and it will be read and interpreted by the browser at the point at which it's found in the page. Now there are times when you might want to have JavaScript run at different points in the page load. And I'm gonna give you another example here. For example, before any content on the page loads, you might wanna have something like this, window dot prompt what is your name. You might want to talk to your user before the rest of the content loads. So I'm going to refresh my page and see this JavaScript in action. What is your name, Lisa? And why prompt them for their name? Because I might want to use that information elsewhere on the page. Well, to use it elsewhere on the page, I'm going to have to store it somewhere. I'm going to need a variable. So I'm going to declare a variable. I'm going to call it a username, and I'm going to set it equal to that prompt so that when I refresh this page and put in my name, I've stored my name in this username. Then I can use the username variable. I can do something like this, document.getElementById, and I'm gonna get the element that's ID customer. I'm gonna set its inner HTML property to username. We'll be using this type of statement a lot. 
it is getting the element that I've ID'd as customer. And I'm going to come down here and on the aside, create a paragraph with an ID of customer. I'll put a little text in here as a placeholder to test to make sure this is working. And it's going to set that element's inner HTML property, which is what goes between the tags to the username. Save and refresh. And here goes my username and there goes hi world and so you might be asking yourself hey wait a second didn't she just tell us this statement is supposed to take the element with the id of customer and set it to username which is now whatever value she typed into the window prompt and you'd be right if you were asking that question and that's exactly why i wanted to do this exercise for you to see that JavaScript and HTML can be intermixed, but they're interpreted line by line by the browser. So here's the problem. This statement runs and does prompt me for my name before any of the rest of the content on the page loads. We know that none of the content on the page is loaded because we see this gray background. So we know this is running in order. So it's prompting for my name. I'm clicking OK, but still not putting that name into the element with the ID of customer. And why? Because at this point, the statement in the web page, the web page does not know what customer is. If I take that statement and move it, I'm going to cut it, and I'm going to move it after the page has figured out where that element is, we're going to get a different impact. Because at this point in time, in the sequential loading of the page, get element by ID customer is known. So let's try that again. What is your name? Let's put in Fabio for something different. And now it says Fabio. Let's do one more thing just for fun. Hi, some text, and then add that to username. And I'll put in web114 students. And now it's saying hi, web114 students. So at this point in time, I'm trying to make sure you're aware of two important concepts. The first is that JavaScript can be placed in the head and anywhere in the body. But the second thing that you ought to be asking yourself is, isn't that going to get a bit messy, Lisa? if I have JavaScript intermixed with my HTML throughout the web page? And the answer would be yes. What we're going to want to do is take all of our JavaScript and put it in our external JS file and then simply invoke it from different places when different events occur. And that's going to be really fun. That's what we're going to do next. Thank you.